Hello and welcome to BBC World News. A Russian passenger aircraft with 78 passengers on board has made an emergency landing at Moscow's Sheremetyevo International Airport after a fire broke out. As the Sukhoi Superjet came to a halt on the runway, dramatic pictures showed its fuselage becoming engulfed in flames. Passengers were seen using escape chutes. State media have said that at least one person has died, but no official death toll has yet been released. Well, joining us for more on this is the BBC's Steve Rosenberg from Moscow. Steve, um, lots of reports coming in. What's the latest you're hearing? Well, this is what we know so far. Um, this evening, uh, uh, an Aeroflot jet, a Suhoi superjet, took off from Moscow's Shedimetyev airport bound for Murmansk. Shortly after takeoff, the crew issued a distress signal. Uh, the aircraft then returned to, to Moscow airport and made... Uh, an emergency landing turned into a, an emergency crash landing. There are reports that uh, the aircraft hit the runway twice, possibly three times, uh, on landing. Um, and the, the footage, the video that you refer to, is, is extremely dramatic. We see the plane engulfed in flames, or the back half of the plane engulfed in flames, uh, as it speeds along the runway before coming to a stop. Uh, emergency services were on the scene very quickly, fire crews, and ambulances. Uh, some of the passengers, we believe, escaped uh, through the down the emergency chutes. Uh, as to the number of people who were injured in this crash, uh, there's a lot of confusion at the moment. Initial reports suggested six people wounded. Some reports suggested one person killed. Other reports. Uh, coming in suggests maybe 13 people have been killed. There's a lot of confusion, I say, and I think it's going to take some time before we, we know the full extent of, um, uh, of how many people actually uh, were injured in this. Uh, as to the cause uh, of this accident, well, an investigation has begun, but some reports suggest possibly the aircraft may have been hit by lightning, and that could have been the reason for malfunctioning uh, of the electronics on board and the reason why the plane return so soon uh, to the uh, airport. We don't know that for sure at the moment. Um, as I say, quite a confused picture right now. Absolutely. Lots of different details coming into to us um, uh, here, Steve, as well. Um, do you have any details on the, the rescue operation that is currently ongoing? We can see pictures of, of fire engines trying to tackle those, those flames and that incredible plume of smoke. Do you know any more about that? Yeah, dramatic pictures, because when that plane came to a stop, and the, the fire crews, as I say, were on the, on the scene very quickly. Some reports suggested it took them an hour to actually put the, the blaze out. And we know that uh, emergency teams were working, particularly in the back half of the plane, near the tail, to try to, to free people there and to find passengers there. As I say, we don't know how many people uh, were injured in this, uh, in this accident, but uh, figures we expect to come in uh, later this evening. Steve Rosenberg from Moscow, thank you very much indeed. This is CNN Breaking News. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our viewers in the United States and around the world. I'm Frederica Whitfield. We begin with this breaking news and stunning video of a commercial jet engulfed in flames as it lands at a Moscow airport. Russian state media report 13 people are dead. You can see the plane clearly on fire and the smoke billowing out as it makes its landing. 78 people were on board when the plane came in for that fiery landing. As it hits the runway, and you can also see that people are running from the plane, some of them with their luggage in hand. CNN's Nathan Hodge is in Moscow. So Nathan, it appears the plane uh, had actually taken off from the Moscow airport. And, and then what happened? Frederica, what happened, according to Aeroflot, uh, Russia's national carrier, uh, was that the plane had taken off from Moscow en route to Murmansk, that's a city in Russia's far north, and had to turn back after, one, after the engines caught fire uh, and uh, returned back to Moscow's Sheremetyevo airport. Uh, that's an airport nor just northwest of uh, the center of Moscow. Uh, landing, as, you, as you've described and as we've seen in these really remarkable images, uh, landing in flames and then the the aircraft uh, skidding to its landing and then uh, we've seen uh, these are very arresting images of uh, the passengers then evacuating on the emergency slides of the plane. 
Uh, again, we're just getting preliminary information uh, about the casualties in this incident, uh, but Russia's investigative committee, that's its top investigative body, has already said that they're going to be looking into this incident. Uh, it's been taken with utmost seriousness uh, by uh, Russian authorities here. And of course, the images are, are quite striking. It's, it's remarkable that uh, as many people were able to survive this uh, emergency landing, uh, given that this, flame, uh, this plane was then engulfed in flame, Frederica. And, and Nathan, do we know much about, uh, you know, Airflot, this, this airline? Do we know much about, you know, its communication with, uh, you know, Control Tower to let, it, let everyone know that it was in trouble turning around? Frederica, yes, uh, Airflot said that um, the... The, the, the plane uh, had to make, was forced to make this emergency landing because of these uh, technical issues. Uh, there was only a very general statement that we received from Aeroflot, uh, which is uh, Russia's national carrier. Uh, it, it operates both internationally and internally in Russia. Um, it's, it operates uh, both uh, um, Boeing and Airbus airframes, uh, as well as uh, domestically manufactured jets such as the Sukhoi Superjet, uh, which, was the, uh, which was the airplane here in question. Uh, so uh, certainly we're just getting this uh, early information from Aeroflot uh, saying that, that, that an investigation had been launched. And the, invest and, and the information that we've had from Russia's emergency services, uh, er emergencies uh, ministry, which is uh, the ministry which is charged with overseeing Russia's first responders. So this has been something that's uh, immediately uh, been all over uh, Russian state television. Uh, the news, in fact, broke in uh, just as a press conference was happening with Russia's uh, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, and simultaneously, these images came in from Sheremetyevo Airport, showing this very dramatic incident with the f the plane engulfed in flames on the ground, and with the, the passengers uh, evacuating down the uh, the ramps, uh, down the emergency slides. Uh, Frederica and Nathan, what's been the experience of getting information out of uh, Russian investigators when something on this scale happens involving, you know, its national carrier? Frederica, we've we found in general that uh, Russia has been fairly responsive. The, the authorities in this case have been quite quick to put out information. There's been a statement that's put up, uh, at least a preliminary one, from Russia's investigative committee uh, saying that they would be undertaking a, a criminal probe, which is a standard practice uh, in any kind of major incident, uh, whether it be a fire in a building uh, or something like this, uh, this uh, emergency landing of this aircraft, Frederica. Nathan Hodge, thank you so much. We'll check back with you there from Moscow. In the meantime, I want to bring in Peter Goles. He's the former managing director of the National Transportation Safety Board. Uh, Peter, we know the plane was already on fire as it came in uh, for that landing. You heard uh, Nathan's reporting that there was trouble when it took off, and then it you know, turned around and came back, and now we're seeing the video uh, as the result. What are some of the questions you want to know uh, about the communication, the problem conveyed, the plane, etc.? Well, <clears throat> as Nathan said, the investigative arm uh, that will be looking at this in Moscow has a pretty good international rep reputation. Uh, they're good. They're straightforward. The information will come out. In this case, it really is eerily similar, the photographs, uh, to the crash of the Concorde. And it appears to be some sort of major fuel line must have let go, because that's a fuel fire. Mm. That there were only 13 uh, fatalities is really quite extraordinary. And that's what we know thus far. Uh, and to see really the response of the passengers getting out of the plane, using the slides, luggage in hand in some cases, in, and on the run. That's right. This will be looked at very carefully in terms of the evacuations because uh, aircraft are supposed to be evacuated, to be able to be evacuated in 90 seconds with mm. half of their uh, you know, doorways, access points uh, closed. And this clearly met the challenge. And it'll be important to see exactly how the uh, passengers were able to get off the plane and whether there was any problems, because there's been a question about that even in U.S. planes uh, in the past few years. So because of that, what, what appears to be, based on the video, pretty rapid evacuation, it appears as though um, and, and this from a novice point of view, that when there was trouble on this plane, 
passengers had enough time to really calculate what kind of trouble they may be in so that they could, and same with the staff on board, they could I immediately get the you know doors open, get those chutes going, and people in as you know whatever kind of fashion that they were able to to manage get out right the flight attendants uh, are really safety professionals i mean and they perform really extraordinarily well under pressure and it was their job to to get those front doors open get the slides out and to guide the people through the door and uh, you pointed out some of the people had bags with them yeah. let me reiterate that is the dumbest thing in the world if you're evacuating your aircraft leave everything behind except your loved ones mm -hmm. and get out of the plane as fast as possible mm. so peter you said this looks like a fuel line fire um what tells you that well the color of the smoke that it was so intense uh that it engulfed uh so much of the plane uh indicates that, that a fuel source uh, is probably to, to blame. And then the question is, what, what caused that? Uh, in the case of the Concorde, you know, it was, a piece, it was a piece of a aircraft on the runway that was kicked back up into the, uh, into mm. the Concorde. So uh, we'll have to look carefully, the Russians will have to look carefully at what instigated this event. Peter Golds, thank you so much. Thank you. Also, still ahead.